Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, sorry I missed you guys on the weekend. There was no uh, weekend update. Um, last week I was so tired. Um, I needed a week weekend to kind of to decompress. We saw some incredible aggressive action last week. Sometimes when you're in this business for such a long time, you need just a minute to just take a deep breath, right? Take a deep breath, kind of see exactly what's going on in the world, um, you know, recharge the batteries, reset the brain, because again, it's never about the day. It's always about your longevity uh, and it's always about your career. So there was no video uh, this weekend and today I feel great. Um, felt great, had a great weekend, did a lot of relaxing, um, got super recharged and here we are, right here we are. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Uh, all we ask is like, subscribe, uh, and share. Uh, and we'll try to do our darnest, right, to uh, continue to give you uh, unbiased uh, technical uh, technical views of the tape uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's fast forward, right? Let's fast forward to uh, 1120, right? November the 20th. That was the highest point after this just absolutely ridiculous V-shaped recovery uh, from the October uh, 26 lows. And then slowly but surely, right? We, If you've been watching this video in the last two weeks, you started noticing something because we've been talking about it uh, for about a week or so. So we started noticing that the market started putting in lower closes than opens. And basically what it means is you see a bunch of red candles on the daily close, which is the complete opposite from the October 26 close. And we saw all green candles. We literally saw two red candles in three and a half weeks of upward bias with the crescendo uh, coming on uh, November the 20th, which basically meant pretty much every single day uh, closed higher than the open. Then slowly but surely, we started seeing a couple of things, right? The next three days, we saw the candles shrinking. And not only did the candles shrink, well, they started putting in a red bar. A red bar is the opposite of a green bar. So it basically meant uh, the closes were lower than the open. And slowly but surely, we started seeing stocks started to guess out. We talked about the NASDAQ 100 names, the Microsofts of the world, the Metas, the Netflixes, uh, and the NVIDIAs of the world, the Tesla of the world, Microsoft, AMD, Apple, Amazon, Google, right? They just wouldn't go up anymore. And it's not that they wouldn't go up forever. They just wouldn't go up because they had such an incredible run. So the market was sucking out uh, speculation money on the NASDAQ 100 names and putting them into retail names, putting them into banks, putting them to hell, everything in GameStop, for God's sake. We'll get to GameStop in a second. That's right. I haven't, been, I haven't been sipping wine. I actually said that, right? So the point is we started seeing the market go lower. We started going the market go lower, but we kept on holding this five-day moving average and we kept on reiterating one number. You guys remember that? If you go back to video, after video, after video, after video, we kept on saying, guys, you don't need to anticipate the back test. Just wait for 388. You guys remember that? 388, 388, 388, over and over again. Every video, 388, 388. And then slowly but surely, the market continued to go sideways, continued to go sideways, put in this last bar, inverted hammer. Again, we were still watching this 388 level and then 388 finally came and finally went and yada, yada, yada. Four days later, here we are back to 382 test of the rising 20 day support. So which basically means this, okay guys, we, we you know, for all you brand new traders, always remember, okay, markets are never as good uh, and never as bad as you think. Stocks get tired both to the downside and to the upside, so for here, the sellers just got tired and the buyers took over. And here, the sell and the buyers got tired and the sellers took over. And now, initially, we have, well, not initially, now we have, since we got this little bit of backfill into uh, this rising 60-minute support, excuse me, this rising 20-minute support, now we have 20-day support. Sorry, long day. 20-day support. 
Now we have a definitive line in the sand. Again, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. So the question now goes into the last lap of 2023. Well, now that we held the rising 20-day support and we did gap fill, right? We physically gap filled this whole move, right? We physically gap filled the whole move. What happens next? And here's the greatest part, right? Here's the greatest part of, of, of my answer. We don't have to guess. Just the same way we talked about, guys, don't guess. 388, 388, 388, 388, 388, right? We broke 388. We went down to the 382, 383 level. We don't have to guess, right? We don't have to guess. So going into tomorrow's session, you're going to see a lot of hammers, right? A lot, a lot of hammers being put in on daily charts. A hammer, again, is bullish, right? If you look at any random hammer on a chart, you'll see. Here's the last uh, let me see, Michelle. Let me see the last hammer here. Uh, da, 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 da. Here, well, here, here's the last hammer. Here's the last hammer here on August the 25th. I'm sure there's one I'm missing, but you could tell what happened, right? After the sell-off, here's the hammer. Basically, stocks closed higher than the open, and it started a, a week worth of uh, aggression. And here was an inverted hammer. And guess what happened next? Selling. So hammer is bullish. Invert hammer is bearish. And you'll see a lot of charts having a hammer off a rising 20, 20 day support. And you'll see that mirroring on a lot of names. The question is, does it actually follow through? Again, that's the answer. We don't know, but we are now prepared on both sides of the market. So if you look at charts tonight, and I, and I again, I always encourage new traders to always look at charts. You'll notice a lot of stocks still look really, really good. A lot of stocks though, tested this rising support and giving us a definitive line in the sand going into for potential more sellers. And that's kind of where we start the day, right? We start tomorrow. Guys, write down this new number. Right now, 388 uh, doesn't really matter anymore. Okay, write down this new number. The new number here is this 382.66 level. That is today's low, and that is also the rising 20-day uh, support. If any time in the next couple of days, three days, five days, two weeks, whatever the case may be, if the bears cannot, excuse me, if the bulls cannot maintain this bounce that we had uh, off those levels today, and the bears start reclaiming back those 382.60s level, guys, look how much room you have down, right? Again, I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse. We just want to make sure that all our viewers, all our members, all our friends, all the people we contact with or interact with on, on social media, whatever the case may be, that puts in 15, 20 minutes to, to watch this every single day is kind of prepared. So we knew the 388 was important. Now we know 382.60s is going to be super duper important uh, on the queues because again, if that falls, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, demand was 388. Now the demand was 382. Well, the next demand is all the way here to 374. So the bulls better hold on uh, to the 382.60s level on the closing basis, or you're going to have another potential uh, very, very aggressive session. Now, the answer to the question is, well, are we going to have, or when is this, you know, I hear this all the time. When is this, uh, uh, um, what is this Santa Claus rally going to start? Hello, we've been in Santa Claus rallying since October the 26th. How much more do you guys want? But yes, it would be nice to close off the year in a very, very aggressive way. People are happier. People are smiling. People are, are in a festive series, a uh, festive move. Uh, the last thing majority of retail investors want to see is a close all the way down to the 50-day moving average. And we're having a completely different conversation uh, going to the January of 2024. So yes, I am in that camp. I would love to see uh, everybody uh, feel good towards the holiday season, holiday time. But just to be completely, completely clear here, we've been Santa Claus rallying for like two months now, okay, since October, since the October, uh, you know, October 26 lows. So guys, I don't know what magical stock you're looking for or a magical green light you're looking for, but the NASDAQ 100, the QQQs, went from uh, 342 all the way up to uh, 392, a 52-point move in a month. Yes, we are Santa Claus rallying, and we're now we have a definitive line in the sand for a potential uh, swan dive if, 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 if we ever get back uh, to that area. So when you look at today's session, again, you'll notice a bunch of things happen, right? The retail names that we've been speaking about for a long time, Right, Etsy. You guys remember we've been talking about Etsy nonstop. Uh, even you know, even say Target finally got rid of half my position today. Uh, last time we talked about Target, we were right here, and I was like, "This damn thing is really not moving. It's not moving." It finally moved. Right, finally moved. You have some great, great move here into uh, the sixty. Uh, excuse me, into uh, the daily supplies into the thirty sixes. About a four and a half point move. 
I'm down to about a half size now, break even now on the balance. If Target can just get above on a closing basis above 3620s, and again, now it's $3 away, but if Target can finally get above like the 3620s on the closing basis, it could really open up. The other names continue to be uh, really strong is the banks, right? The banks, whether it's talk or hearsay or speculation about uh, eventual rate cuts, well, they're loving this. You know, they're loving it. Citibank going nuts. Uh, Goldman Sachs uh, going nuts. Bank of America Golden going nuts. Ba JP Morgan, right, going nuts. So there's a lot of great rotation in the market. Uh, the semiconductor names have are having, having their rest. The software names having the rest. And now that we bounced off those levels, the question is, are we going to bounce tomorrow? We will see. Again, get a game plan for everything. But look at the stocks. And this is kind of what we keep on reiterating how strong this market is. Look at the stocks that have their one or two week runs throughout the year. They're having it now. So look at a name like Carvana, right? Carvana, we, you know, just a monster. Carvana, absolutely going nuts. A name like Letter U, is going nuts. AFRM, again, these stocks have runs twice a year. This, again, it really shows how strong these stocks are, but they're having their runs. Look at GameStop. Again, I, I, I'm not even, I'm not, I promise you, I'm not high, I'm not on pills, I'm not drinking. The longer this market holds up here, look at this flag GameStop is building it, right? Again, I'm not saying it's gonna take out the flag tomorrow or the next day, but boy, oh boy, if you trade this crap, and I say crap the nicest way possible, but if you trade GameStop, all you know, all the speculation money flow, aren't you supposed to be prepared? Like I'm prepared for beta every single day. But a name like GameStop that had this massive move and not going down, all it needs to do is reclaim back the 150-day EMA. Boy, oh boy, this thing could stretch out as well. Look at a name, for example, like BlackBerry in, in the theme of meme stocks. This thing is literally one day away from waking up. So you can could clearly see the market continues to be very good. The market continues to reward the smaller names, the speculation names. And now the question is, well, do we finally get these beta names to wake up? But if not, right, we will be prepared. And what I mean by we'll be prepared is, well, take a look, right? Look in NVIDIA, right? Look in NVIDIA. So NVIDIA finally got cracked, right? Finally cracked, went down to the 50-day. This is what I mean by if the bears start to kind of come back through today's levels. Look in NVIDIA. If it loses the 50-day moving average, that's a problem. Look at Tesla. Again, Tesla's been in this tight channel, but boy, oh boy, if Tesla starts losing the bottom of this channel here, why can't it gap fill all the way back down to the 224? Again, I'm not saying this is going to happen tomorrow, but again, don't we have to be prepared for it? And that's the name of the game. So if you look at the action for tomorrow, uh, you got names, you know, like a Qualcomm that's setting up to the upside, right? Pretty looking chart. You got Roblox that is maybe a day or two away from maybe testing its earnings highs. Uh, you got a name, again, like Ga like GameStop, right? Like GameStop that, again, nobody in their right mind would be invested in this thing. I say that with tongue in cheek. I know, I know, I know. Kill the, what is it called? Kill the rich? <laughs> what was that documentary called on Netflix? Eat the rich? Whatever the hell it's called. But uh, the point is GameStop actually does look good. And if it does confirm this top of the channel here uh, with the next couple of days, or, or maybe it doesn't, but boy, oh boy, this thing could stretch out. Uh, as well. So the key is, guys, trade where you feel comfortable. If you trade meme stocks, just be prepared. If you trade uh, semiconductors and softwares and biotechs, whatever it is, come to the table every single day prepared. You can't just wake up at 9.30 in the morning and see the hot stock of the day. If you if you, if you, if you have doubts the case, um, I, I know very, very little limited traders that are having a massive career based on that theory. Your job is to be prepared from the night before, Go through a lot of stocks. Go through the groups that you're trading. Go do whatever you have to do to put yourself in the driver's position so the next day you're prepared for good, bad, or indifferent instead of sitting there with wishful thinking like, you know, hopefully something is going to fall into your lap and, and God is going to help you. Again, God doesn't care about your position. God doesn't care about uh, the stock market. God is there for a bigger purpose uh, and not hoping and saving you uh, from a bad trade. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about it. Now that we know we have a line in the sand in um, uh, on the NASDAQ 100 for the foreseeable future, let's talk about some pivots uh, for today. And these are names, basically. These are names uh, that we talked about during the day. We were ready for You'll notice there is a lot of uh, a lot of smaller names, and the smaller names did very well. Uh, Tesla obviously didn't break below yet. Uh, IONQ 1370 needs to build. Again, not a big move, not a big move, but again, $13 stock. This is the highest close in this whole formation. 
1371 to 1409. Again, still still looks like it wants 1450s. Uh, next stop, uh, Carvana. Congratulations for all you guys who caught Carvana. Uh, opening range, if it opens below 3650, it opened exactly at 3650. The low of the day is literally uh, 3652. I used that a pivot, not opening, if not opening range highs. I mean, everything in this thing just went absolutely nuts. It opened up at 30, uh, 3650, opening range. And just went absolutely bananas into the 42 level. I mean, look, look at the move here, right? So these are the, you know, this is literally, this is literally the opening range highs here and just went absolutely out of its mind. Uh, Carvana, uh, Airbnb gave a dollar pop, 135.42 needs to confirm. Uh, here was uh, Airbnb, Airbnb, right? Airbnb took out that level, you know, traded up about a dollar 30, nothing huge. Uh, BBIO 31 needs to build. Again, you can see smaller names, not necessarily small cap, but smaller names. Uh, definitely, um, you know, definitely, definitely uh, rewarding those who trade them. Uh, 31 needs to build. The stock went to 32 and a half. Really, really big move. It looks higher from here. Um, oh, and this is the big one, right? This is the big one on the ETF side. So ranges for the week, 390.55 to the upside. Uh, 3580 to the downside, and here are the cues, right? Perfect move. Uh, took out 3580 and traded right to the next support of 38266, which now we know is the line in the sand. So that's it, guys. Hopefully, everybody is uh, doing well. Hopefully, everybody is healthy. Uh, tomorrow, again, we are prepared on both sides of the market. I have downside, uh, downside movers, I have potential upside movers. The key is don't guess, just the same way we didn't guess about 3 to the downside. Don't guess that there's more and you know more selling to come. Maybe it maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but at least now we know the next line in the sand. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.